1 p.m. on Saturday, which is like, you know, six hours early. So for those of you who are able to join me, I appreciate it. I've got a quick, it's not, well, I mean, you know, it's a moderately easy card. Okay, it's a totally easy card. It's a moderately quick card. How about that? That's what I was trying to say. And it is a birthday card. It is not the birthday card that I am taking to the 90-year-old lady who is celebrating today. I thought I would use something a little more flowery and pretty, less cutesy. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Linda. Appreciate you guys joining me. And I stumped you all. Yay! I'm pretty sure I get myself a prize. So anyway, this uses the Totes Adorbs Hey Chuck stamp set. We've had a lot of chicken sets in the past couple of years. They've all had chickens, I think, from this same family. But this is the dude version, and he is adorable. And so I've used him and his dies. No kidding, I bought the dies because of this Actually, I bought this the whole bundle because of that fence and post and this starburst, and I only used the starburst. So there you go. And I've used the gorgeously made die set. Now, this die set is great. It has a beautiful bundle. It, co it uh, coordinates with wonderful paper. But what I love are these two edge dies. This makes a torn edge, and this makes a notebook type edge. So really fun. And this label happened to fit perfectly. So, hey, Tara. Hi, Carol. Hi, Karen. Hey, Faith. Hey, everybody. I appreciate you guys coming so early and right in the middle of your weekend. All right, so let's get started. Everything will be on my blog tomorrow, so you don't even need to take notes or nothing. Now, what's interesting is you might not have realized it, but this is the Le Shops DSP. So, even if you don't love the shop side, the shopping retail side of the paper, don't be afraid of it. It's very fun paper. It's got it's crushed curry, it's knight of navy, it's calypso coral, and all of the patterns have something on the other side. So you, you've got a lot of options open to you. So let's go ahead and start with this piece of, it's actually calypso coral and petal pink. And you can see that from my Knight of Navy mat, I already cut out my two starbursts. So if you're into saving cardstock, this is a good way to do it. I would not recommend that you do this on the inside mat, though, because especially if you're going to write a note, these little things can kind of screw up your handwriting. And I don't know about y'all, but I have enough trouble <laughs> writing legibly. I should have been a doctor. <laughs> writing legibly without humps and bumps. But you can absolutely do it on the card front. And it's a good way to just get an extra little little bump out of your cardstock. So we're going to mat this here like so. And while that dries, I'm going to make the middle panel, okay? And this is kind of a fun one. It's just a piece of Calypso Coral. And using Calypso Coral ink, I am going to stamp the little birthday cake image from Hey Chuck all over, kind of, this is my version of random, okay, so don't judge. Somebody told me a really good trick, but it was like math, and so it was hard for me, and I, I wasn't, I didn't figure it out. But this is random, and we're going to cut the edges, or the tops anyway. So all you got to do is get that little tone on tone going there. A friend just got attacked by the rooster in her flock. See, roosters, that's why if I was ever going to buy chickens, I would do the, um, let's see, straight run is you get whatever you get, and then there's this other version that you get all females, which I think would be best. Nothing against dudes, but in a chicken flock, they have very little uh, purpose if you aren't trying to breed. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to cut this with the dye from gorgeously made and I'm just so this okay here let me tell you how this works this is two and three quarters wide by four inches long okay so start with that and then just put the um, notebook die right at the top like so and I'm hooking it down with a sticky note like that and then just put the terror the torn edge die if I can get it off my magnet at the bottom and I just really kind of put one little edge right at the bottom. So my strip is still about four inches long, even after I'm cutting it. Okay, so I'm going to do this right off camera. Hang on just a second. So 
now we'll just pick this up. Careful, careful. And pull this out. And you can see we have the notebook top. And then we have the torn edge bottom. So fun, I love these dies. And what's so cool is you also get a sentiment die and two cool foliage dies. So even if you're not using the gorgeously made stamp set, which you should because it's awesome, the dies are amazeballs, I love them. Okay, let me put those away so I don't lose them. Nothing like losing your amazeballs dies. And I think you could do something with this. I, I'm not sure what, it looks like a banner sorta to me. But for the time being, I'm just tossing it. Mm -hmm. Tossing it out. Tossing it out. Okay, now, I am going to, thank you, Karen. Hey, Jean. I am going to just adhere this with some liquid glue to the card front, roughly in the center. And by center, roughly center, I mean definitely side to side center and roughly center top to bottom. How about that? Okay, and then we'll set that aside. Now, I have another piece of the Le Shops, and I'm going to use a small blending brush to add uh, like a glow, if you will, in the center here. So just kind of going up in a circle. I want it to be roughly the same size as when I put those two dies together. You'll notice whenever you want, you're want, you using your blending brush, I highly recommend that you ink and then start somewhere off of the off of your cardstock or your DSP to make sure you don't get any um, blotches and splotches. Nobody, nobody wants splotches and splotches unless that's what you're going for. Thank you, Rosie. All right, now that we have that ready, we're going to mat it on its own little piece of Knight of Navy. Whenever I do Calypso Coral and Knight of Navy, I think of the Broncos. I know that their, their orange is not actually Calypso Coral, but you know, that's what I think of. All right, and now I'm going to adhere this with some Stampin' Dimensionals. Because, you know, dimensionals are a thing. And if you wanted, you could use black dimensionals here, but I've got white out, and so that's what I'm using. That's what I'm using. Using. Wayne is checking the brisket. We had backed everything up to be at our friend's just before five. And then she called this morning and said, you know, everybody's coming around two. So if you want to come around two, I'm like, uh, ooh. All right, we'll, we'll tell the brisket to hurry up. As a result, my hair is done. My makeup is on. I have my clothes ready to wear. All the food is ready to go in the truck. I know, it's crazy how organized I am. And all we got to do now is, is pull the brisket out and when it gets cool enough to handle, cut it up. Okay, now, remember I cut out those um, starburst die cuts. What we're gonna do is we're going to adhere them with liquid glue kind of right in the center. See how that glow is kind of behind them? And I'm covering them with my die cuts. So let me show you how this is gonna work. Stop. I have my sentiment. Remember I told you I used the gorgeously made label, okay? <laughs> hey, Jean, I'm so sorry. I Although that does mean my work here is done. So this sentiment wants to cover your seam for sure on there. And then we've got this little chicken dude who we're gonna color in just a second. And he, his little shorts guy, are gonna cover the other part of the seam and kind of overlap the sentiment like that, okay? So if I just center it up and put the um, edges pretty close together, we're gonna be fine. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. That's actually the description. I'm a Stampin' Up, an independent Stampin' Up enabler. <laughs> that should be what we put on our, on our signature blocks, independent Stampin' Up enablers. Y'all can be Stampin' Up! Enablers, too, because the reason most of us get to be Stampin' Up! Enablers is so that we get the Stampin' Up! discount. And we have an awesome joining special right now. I would so love to have any or all of you on my team. If you're interested in that, please let me know. Maybe not today. 
because as soon as I get done here, I'm rolling out of the house and I will not be able to answer. And I would feel very bad about that. But this evening I'll be back. So if you're interested in joining up, um, get an extra $30 worth of Stampin' Up! products for free with your $99 starter kit and shipping free, my favorite thing. All right, so now I have got, I stamped this little dude in tuxedo black and I also stamped his skateboard. So let's go ahead and color him up. Yes, it is exactly like stacking up Kohl's coupons because with the DSP sale going on right now, you can add, get 15% off of all your DSP, anything you want to add to the starter kit or don't add it to the starter kit, buy it with your new discount and you're going to get 20% off with already 15% off. So that's a lot of percent off. Okay, we're going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals and a Stampin' Right marker. So first, let's go ahead and do the Stampin' Right marker. This is Crushed Curry. And I'm going to color his beak. And I'm going to color the dots in his board shorts. I'm pretty sure those are board shorts. But you can see he's got them pulled up like around his waist. And so he's kind of a, a goofball. And it makes his shorts be way too short. So he actually looks like Tom Selleck wearing his little shorts in the original Magnum P.I., just saying. Okay, now I'm gonna take light Tahitian Tide and color his shorts. He looks like a dude who would wear bright blue shorts, especially skateboarding. Now, uh, this guy may not be the real color of chickens, but y'all, it's a chicken wearing sport shorts, riding a skateboard. So there's a lot of other things to not be believable, not, not just his coloring. Okay, so let's take this same light Tahitian Tide and color the skateboard. And we'll use the dark one to color the bottom layer. Here's an interesting point. Maybe you don't know it. I'm fixing to color the wheels, but when they are on a skateboard, they're called trucks. Did you know that? Uh, my brother was a skateboarder when we were growing up. Okay, so this is the uh, this was the dark granite gray. You could use the light one. I'm going to use the light granite gray to color his little feathery body. Right in there, like so. And I'm going to color his eyelids gray. Now, lest you think I came up with this color palette on my own, nope, I totally peered at the <laughs> picture of this guy colored in the catalog and decided it was, it was a good color combination. So there you go. That is true. However, he also doesn't have knobby backwards knees. Tom Selleck's knees were like regular, still are. Tom Selleck is, he has aged more beautifully than almost any actor. Well, there's a lot of them who've aged beautifully, but he really has. Okay, now for the actual body of said dude, we're gonna use light pecan pie for his body. Carefully, carefully, like so. And I believe his legs are also going to be pecan pie. He's been out in the sun. I mean, he's a surfer skateboarder, dude. You know, surfers, I, I think they use skateboards to like practice during the off season. That, that, I think that's pretty true. And then I'm gonna use the light copper clay to color these little doohickeys next to his beak. I don't really know what that's called, but that's what I'm calling them as the beak doohickeys. And we're gonna also color his top knot and his tail. Now see, this is a completely believable chicken. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is a Americana surfboardist. That's it. He's a, an Americana surfboardist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Juanita, appreciate you joining. All right. Now I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue right there on his little chicken foot. On his little chicken foot. Come on, glue. Come on, uh, silly thing. Did y'all see that being perverse right there? And I'm just gonna uh, adhere his little feet to his little skateboard straight up because that's the best way to skateboard is straight up. And then while that is drying, I'll flip it over and adhere some dimensionales to him. 
one on the skateboard and then a couple on him and I need another one and another one and another one and another one okay there we go now he is gonna go pretty much right there and then this guy is gonna go right about there okay now I can scoot him down to right there so I'm gonna put him on first Lores, they're Lores. Uh, hmm. Well, of all the people who were here, I would have thought that you would know that. So these are now officially Lores, not beak doohickeys. All right, so let's go ahead and put this right there. And I'm scooting it down as far as I can and still cover that, that seam, okay? And then we'll pull the backs off of our dimensionals. And we're going to put him right here. And it's a personal thing for me. I don't like to see sent. I don't like to see stuff um, like I wouldn't want him right here. Okay, even though that would kind of work, I don't want him right there because I don't want to see that. I don't. I don't like to see it. It bugs me. And so you know, if that doesn't bug you, you do you. But really, what I'm doing is making sure I can't see that and making sure his tail does not cover the sentiment and making sure that he covers the seam. Okay, so all those things I've just made sure of because, you know, there we go. I just know them as chicken feet. There you go. Except it's these things, they're not feet. Those aren't feet, Neoka. Come on, man, they're not feet. All right, now I've got some ombre mat, decorative mat, uh, decorative mats, ombre mat, decorative mats, no. Ombre mat decorative dots. And I'm gonna put a couple of these on the card. A big one and a little one. And I'm kind of mixing up the ombreness of them. And there we go. There is our card front. On the inside, I am going to um, stamp the little cake guy. I do have to, uh oh. The one thing I did not do, hmm, well, we'll just fix that. Stamp that off, stamp, stamp, stamp. When you forget to bring your cleaning offy tool, just stamp it a bunch of times till it quits stamping and then you can just wipe it with a paper towel. Now, I'm going to stamp this. Nope, but I would have called them feet too, the chicken feet. We're going to stamp our birthday cake and I want to see how he stamps okay he stamps pretty straight but you can see he's a little bit offset on the stamp itself so if I want him in the middle I'm gonna offset just a bit like that and then in night of navy I am going to thank you Clydeen I'm gonna stamp it's your birthday that's why he has a reason something to crow about see so I'm gonna do a quick double check here Yep, I like it. Okay, okay. Everybody hold your breath. Hold your breath. Hold, 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 and breathe. Okay. Whew, I did it. Now, I am making this a chocolate cake. You can make it whatever kind of cake you want, but mine is chocolate because chocolate makes the world go round. Okay, I've got crushed curry for the flame. I've got a Tahitian Tide candle. And then I'm using the light pecan pie for the cake part. Remember, chocolate. I made a maple pecan cake for the birthday girl. She isn't eating chocolate these days. So I think it'll be good. I do also like maple. Okay, and this is just, that was just the dark pecan pie blend to make the frosting. Thank you, Faye. And then we're going to mat this little guy on Night of Navy. And attempt to put it in my card front, card base, right side up. I don't know, I've, I've, been, I've had kind of a rash of doing them wrong this last couple of three weeks, I don't know. And it's really annoying. I mean, it's not like it doesn't happen to everybody, but it's kind of annoying. All right, there we go. 
Got a little bit too much glue right there. Got to be careful with the glue. You don't need a lot, and I got a little carried away there. And then we're going to put our card front on. So the only thing better than German chocolate cake with the wonderful pecan coconut frosting is brownies. Yeah, brownies are pretty good. Yeah, brownies are definitely good. What was I doing? Does anybody know? Oh, I was looking for dimensionals. There we go. See? I heard my husband come in, and my brain went, tilt, don't know where I'm, what I'm doing. Again, you could use black dimensionals if you've got them handy, but I'm going to use the white. It all works. One added little advantage of cutting your die cuts out of your cardstock is you save a little bit of weight for when you're mailing your cards. Is it a lot of weight? No. But every little bit counts when you're putting 27 layers on a card. Just throwing that out there. Okay, that's definitely upside down. So this way would be right side up. There we go. Oh, this guy's, this is so cute. I'm, I'm not a huge cutesy card person, but I really like this one. All right, let's go ahead and finish off our envelope flapper and our envelope fronta. Ooh, chocolate cake with peanut butter frosting. Yeah, you know what? When I was looking up sheet cakes, because I wanted a sheet cake in a big 15 by 18 pan, what I started with was a Texas sheet cake, which is chocolate and chocolate and chocolate, and then there's some more chocolate. But when I discovered that she couldn't have it, that seemed rude to take a cake to her birthday party that she couldn't eat. And one of the car the cakes that I came up with, a chocolate version, unfortunately, so it just went into my save for later pile, is a chocolate cake, chocolate sheet cake with peanut butter frosting. And one of the things about sheet cake is that your sheet cake is about this thick, and then you put about the same thickness of frosting on. So the frosting cake ratio in a Texas sheet cake in particular is straight up straight on. Now that's, if you have, if you have a sweet tooth like I do, then yeah, it's the perfect proportion. I know, Nioka, I told my husband, if when I get to the place where I cannot have chocolate anymore because it destroys my body, I, I really just want to be killed because that doesn't sound like a very good, good life. I'm just saying, I mean, that is certainly my own personal preference and does not reflect any, my thoughts on anybody else's thoughts, but Whew, I can't even imagine. It's bad enough having to limit it because, you know, diet and weight and calories and all of that. But to have to know that, whew, that would just, just kill me. All right, we'll do a quick fussy cut, and then we're going to color that cake, and we'll be done, ske. We'll be done, ske. Okie dokie. And once again... Crushed curry for the flame. Tahitian Tide for the candle. <gasps> Allergic to chocolate. Oh my gosh. I just, oh. Mm, mm -mm. That would be a very bad thing. Dark pecan pie for the frosting. And light pecan pie for the, the cake. Now remember, when you are coloring a, an envelope with your blends, you want to be very light-handed. Because if you push hard, you're going to get that blend to bleed through to the back. I guarantee you it will happen. I know this because I've done it. So if you're heavy-handed and, you and you don't feel like that, you're confident in that, put a piece of window sheet or one of the sheets from the new stamps, the new poly photopolymer stamps. Stick that inside your envelope so that you don't run the risk of coloring the back when you did not mean to. I'm being deliberately very light. I'm going to go back over that frosting, though, because it doesn't look nearly deep enough. I figure this is milk chocolate cake with a chocolate top. All right. And there you go, people. Hey, Chuck, it is super, super cute. You really kind of want it, I think, because you've also got a weather vane die that cuts out. You can stamp and cut out an adorable little um, fence, and you can also stamp out this, uh, this cake that I made. Okay, but also don't forget gorgeously made. I even if you didn't love the foliage, which why wouldn't you? Cause it's beautiful. These three dies are amazingly useful. 
All right, guys, I appreciate you coming six hours early and right in the middle of your Saturday and spending part of your weekend with me. So I hope I will see you on Thursday at um, two o'clock. Nope, one o'clock, one o'clock on Thursday, <laughs> right? Yeah, one o'clock on Thursday for another YouTube video. I have no idea what we're gonna do, but it'll be something. Have a good one, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks so much. Bye.